In this video, we're going to take a look at events and logs that we can access both through vCenter and also directly on the host because not all the logs are actually available on vCenter. So I'm in the homepage of my vCenter right now. Click over to events. We can see the various things that have been occurring on my system. Nothing overly complicated here. We can see that someone logged in and had a scheduled task that was run and, you know, various other things that have been going on. If I click into one of these events, you can see a related events option. If I click show down below here, and that can be useful to tell me that that actually occurred because of a scheduled task. But it gives us a little bit of detail about what might be related to that event. And we also have some links to some of the affected objects. Nothing overly complicated here. We do have an option to click export events and we can specify where we want to send them. So in this case, I'm going to say that I'd like the system events that are errors or warnings for the last four hours. I could put a maximum number of events, but I don't want to do that. And then I'll specify a file to send them to. And once we open that in Notepad, it's a little more readable anyway. But this now gives us a pretty easy way to focus on just what's happened recently without some of the other clutter of user messages versus system messages and so on. You also can't really do much in the way of filtering in this interface. So again, exporting the events to a file might be easier to deal with them. But in addition to these events, we also have log files available. So if we go back to the home page, you'll see that we have system logs. Typically, Windows services will record their messages into the Windows event log, but vCenter is not exclusively a Windows service. I think for all the various logging code they wrote for other components, and a lot of this comes from VM kernel, it uses its own internal logging mechanisms. So if we click onto the system logs, we can see that we have the vCenter server log for VPXD. There's actually earlier versions of VPXD that are also maintained, so you may want to go in and check in the directories and so on directly. We can see various events that have been occurring. And these are pretty detailed logs. And you'll notice we actually have the option to say show every 2048 lines and retrieve them section by section, or just say show all and get the entire log. And as you can see, this one's rather large. We also have the alert log if there has been alerts going on. We've got profile log as well for a little bit more of the inventory service and some of the more dynamic data that's going on in terms of performance counters, alert monitoring, things of that nature. So these logs are not super legible, not that informative either. Basically, at this point, we can do export system logs, and that's about it. But one of the things that you don't see, which is actually really important, is the host D log for each of the hosts. There's a couple of alternatives here. We can connect directly to the host using the vSphere client. We're going to get a warning saying that that host is already managed by vCenter and that we maybe shouldn't be doing that. So long as we're not messing with network and storage and those type of interfaces, we should be okay. So I've already gone and opened another session directly with one of my ESXi hosts using my vSphere client. And you can see from that log section, if I go back to home, a lot less options you might remember when we're connected directly to ESXi instead of vCenter. But we do have that same system logs button. And you can see that we have the server log and we also have the VPX agent log and the VM kernel log. So anything related to storage, iSCSI, NFS, you know, those sort of system components, we definitely can expect to see a lot of those kind of details here. And we've also got the host D log, which will give us more details about services and so on that are going on. Some of the file system details, some of what's going on with the virtual machines and so on. So both of these are very helpful, and this is probably where you can get much more information for troubleshooting a particular host than the logs that are on vCenter, which are pretty limited. And we can also see that vCenter agent log. And that vCenter agent log is important too, because sometimes you'll see that your host code is not responding. What that generally means is it's not responding to vCenter. It doesn't mean that it's not live. This VPX service sometimes does fail. And if you go onto the DCUI of your host, there's an option in troubleshooting to say restart management agents specifically for that purpose. So we can export the system logs here as well and send those out to a text file. Another alternative is to configure syslog collection and have all the logs of your hosts collected in a central location. That's not integrated directly into vCenter, but if you go onto the vCenter installation CD, you'll see the syslog collector is available there and we can have that go and access the hosts 